You know what? We're gonna go to my other spot. There's a hump right here that comes up to 68 feet right out here and nobody's on it. This could be an awesome spot. We're right at the end of the point. There's a little point that sticks out right here. And we're gonna drift right across the end of it. It's gonna be awesome. Watch, we're gonna get we're gonna get a good one here. Here we go, Joey. We're almost to it. No, we're almost here it is. Look at that. Oh, there it is. Third one? Yep. I'll let him. Look at the screen. I want you to see it. Look at the screen. I said right as soon as we get over the back side of it. Little one? No, this is a keeper. Got the hot hand, not Ooh, James got one. James, good one. This is yeah. the spot. I'm telling you. James got a good one too. Also, I'll, I'll dump yours. James, slow down. Over here. We got James' line. Hold on. Did you just have his line? Or it's just James' line. Yeah. James didn't have a fish. Why is your line all the way over here, James? <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Next Drift. This is a July 5th, 2021 fluke trip out to Montauk. This is the day after Joey caught his giant, so we were really excited to get back out there. On this trip we have my buddy John, his brother James, the infamous Joey, and myself Justin. And uh, you know the conditions were a little bit different on this trip than they were the day before. Uh, for whatever reason, you know, the forecast, um, they just haven't been able to get it right, it seems. But... Uh, had a little bit different wind direction, bigger seas, uh, it was much rougher getting out there across Montauk Point than it was uh, the last trip, but um, you know, we made do, and uh, the fish kind of repositioned themselves, so I figured what we would do in this episode is dive a little bit more into the uh, technical aspects of where uh, we were fishing and what the bottom looked like and how the tide will dictate what piece of structure that you're going to fish out there and how the fish relate to the structure based on the tidal changes. So anyway, sit back, relax. Hopefully you'll learn a little something. And uh, as always, if you like this content, please like, comment, and subscribe. That's a good one. Woo! Alright, buddy? Fighting off the seasick. I like it. Well, take a dram of me. I'm good. Re re tying. me. I, I knew I couldn't do that again. We can use this fish for the intro. Oh, it look bigger than that. Is that a keeper? I think it is. It's about to close. Keep the seagull. Come on, John. I'm in there. I mean, I'm in the net. Definitely keep it. Here, just tip it up. Just tip it up to me. There we go. No, no, I'm gonna let it go. We're gonna get it bigger. Joey, move. He ate it, though, Joey. Look. Yeah. So this particular spot that we're fishing is really unique. It's a hump that comes up to about 68 feet of water. It's all by itself, out on a big flat. Uh, the deeper side drops off to 75 feet, then the next step after that it goes on to the 85 to 100 foot range. On the shallow side, heading back towards mainland, uh, it'll dip off back into about 72 to 73 feet before it comes up again into 40. And what's unique about it is it has a small point on one end, and when the tide's running back in or out, the fish will stage right next to that point. So let's take a little bit better look at this. Uh, we're here, this is Montauk Point right out here, um, and we're using the Navionics um, mapping system. Uh, I have both platinum chips on both of my units. Um, I have a Humminbird on the Grady, I have a Lowrance HDS-16 on the um, Sea Fever, and um, you know, I, I like both of them. They're both great units. Uh, I really like the platinum maps. Uh, there's other um, chips that are available out there. Humminbird has some really great ones too. I just happen to really like the Navionics map uh, just because I've used it for so long. Uh, but let's, um, let's, let's dive into this. So you can use this information anywhere you go fluke fishing, whether it be in the Sound, whether it be out at Block, Nantucket Shoals, Montauk, uh, down in New Jersey, wherever you go fluke fishing, you can use the same type of information. The, the basic 
rule is understanding what the fish are going to be doing. How do they position themselves and why? Any predatory game fish is going to utilize current, whether it be a freshwater stream, a river, um, out in the salt water, you know, the tidal changes with the water moving. Fish are going to use, predatory fish are going to use structure uh, in conjunction with the flowing water to position themselves to ambush bait. So that's what we're looking for each time uh, we go out here and, and fish a particular spot. If I'm going to go out, let's go out to a, um, a, a well-known uh, fluke spot. Let's. Uh, this is called uh, Cartwrights, okay? And you can see out here, you know, there's a uh, 100, uh, drops off to 100 feet of water, goes out to even more as you get further out. Uh, but up in here, you can see it's uh, 80, 88, um, 89, and then right up on here is 72 feet. So this is a big shoal, a big rocky shoal. And... So when the tide, let's say the tide's coming from, um, from this direction, we have an incoming tide. Now the tide direction can alter each day based on, you know, how strong the tide is. But let's just say that the tide is coming in and it's heading in this direction, okay, which would be west, or I'm sorry, east to west. Um, what I'm going to do is, you know, there, there will be fish, especially on a big piece of structure like this, there will be fish or there could be fish anywhere along any of these spots, okay? Um, but if I really want to look for a specific, a specific spot that's going to hold a bunch of fish, I'm going to use that current to my advantage, and that's going to dictate where on this piece of structure I'm going to fish. So usually, let's, uh, let's look over here. We have this... Um, uh hump that comes up here it's 85 feet 87 over here is 93 so if the tide's coming in and it's going in in this direction coming in i'm gonna position my drifts so i'm i come across right in this section here all right so i'm gonna maybe set the boat up over here get the lines ready get the boat in, boat in position and i'm gonna try to drift right across this spot right here Okay, just like that. Um, you know, you can see this point that comes out right here. That's a great ambush point. Uh, if the tide's coming in, like we were saying, the fish could be sitting right right back here. Or they'll be sitting right back here where these contour lines get a little bit tighter. And it's more of a, uh, more of a sharper, sharper uh, drop-off. So that's, you know, and that's not to say you can't catch fish straight off the top of the hump or in the front of the hump. But... Usually, most of the time, the fish are going to position themselves, uh, you know, right along that back edge of the structure, uh, so the water's flowing uh, over the top of the uh, the area that they're sitting. Um, so anyway, so let's let's uh, you know kind of look at this. Uh, we'll pick a spot um, that's uh, similar to what we're fishing over here. Um, you know, so here here we have an, another uh, high spot. 60 feet and you can see how it kind of tapers off this is more of a gradual slope uh up here you have a great big flat this is a a big sandy flat you know there's probably some rocks and stuff up there um over here we have another hump okay this is a, a good good spot here 59 feet 60 61 and you can see how this how this uh shape of the uh of the of the hump or the shoal um you know, comes out and it forms a point. So same thing. If the water's moving, it's on the incoming tide and it's coming across here, you know, I'm going to position the boat. I'm going to start right about here, try to come across this little point right here. Uh, I may set the boat up to come across the, the high spot of it. Usually most of the time, if the if the current's really moving, uh, I'll, I'll focus more on the points. Uh, for whatever reason, fish seem to gravitate towards the points uh, more so than just kind of, you know, aimlessly sitting out on the top of, uh, you know, a piece of structure like this. But so those are the those are the features that I'm looking for. You know, you can see another one here. This is a great one. 72 feet. You know, these are the little intricate places I talk about that I, I always like to find. We have 72 feet here. It goes down to 77, 81 uh, and drops, keeps dropping off into that 90 foot range. If that tide is coming in, in this direction, I'm going to aim the boat right about in here. This is where I think most of the fish will be. Now, you know, if I pick one up, you know, say here, I'll do another drift. Um, but, you know, you may find that they're uh, tucked in a little bit. 
Um, once you start putting marks down, you're going to really find out where they are on a particular piece of structure. And um, then you can start doing your short drifts. And that's what we talk about. Doing these short drifts where you're you're putting the boat up here and you're drifting across. You get to about here and then you start back up again. You know, instead of these big long drifts where, you know, we'll go all the way out here and sail along and have, a, you know, a 45-minute long drift. I don't. I never do that. I don't waste the time. Um, I'll just fish one little section. I'll start here, drift over to about here, and then start back up and just make these little short drifts. And most of the time you'll find, just like uh, here in the video you saw, you know, we were drifting over the spot like I told Joey. We're coming over the spot like this, and here we go. We're getting ready, getting ready, and bang, right exactly where you expected the fluke to be. So I hope that uh, gives you a little bit of idea. Uh, let's uh, let's show you what the side imaging looks like. Uh, so it's basically a picture of the piece of structure we were fishing. So this is an actual picture of the piece of structure we were fishing on this trip. Uh, this is a side imaging picture. So uh, just to kind of, uh, for the people who don't know, let's say this is the boat right here. All right, our boat would be right there. And uh, this side is our starboard side. And I have it set to uh, about 100 feet off to this side and this is our port side facing this way and we're same thing we're about 100 feet out to here so this is a we're driving through probably the top of the top of the piece of structure the hump um, and as you can see some really cool features on this a lot of smaller uh, rock out through this section here um, you have some chunkier rock that's up in up in this area same thing over here and you know you have what's called a transition line, which is some sand that's down in this section. So you can see the sand meets this rockier uh, structure here. Same thing over here. You got some smaller rock, probably gravel and sand, and it meets this transition line right about here. These are the areas that are going to attract the fluke and attract bait fish. Bait fish will sit, you know, right up in here like this, and the fluke will, you know, be waiting right about in here. So if we have current flowing in this direction, like this, you know, bait fish will sit up in here and the fluke will be sitting like right about in that area um, or or off right over here waiting for a meal off this little uh, piece right here, as you can see, see that? So this is the area that we're fishing. It has a lot of diverse uh, diversity to the bottom. You know, you have the larger chunks, you have the uh, the smaller chunks of rock, you have sand, you have gravel. These are all really good pieces uh, of a piece of structure that you really want to uh, focus on. Never heard of that. That's a big one. That's a good one. Yes, sir. Get the net. Oh my God, you're on my line and I got a massive fluke, dude. Massive. Oh, Jesus. I set the hook good on him. I'll just keep pressure on him. Just cut your line. Oh my god, it's a big one, John. I can't. I can't. Just cut the line. I need scissors. Cut the line. You can do it, Justin. Just cut it at the where the line is, where my line is. Justin's line. No, don't cut my line. That's a big fluke, guys. No, it doesn't feel as big anymore. If we cut my line in, that's a tiny fish. Well, well I'll retie it. It was pulling good. Bring it forward here. Nah, just hold on. No. The keeper. Net the fish. Net the fish. What is James doing? Wow. What a collected I group. <laughs> it is. Just have to edit off the F bomb. Right. Here you go, Joey. Joey's on. Mark, Mark. Let me get through here. What is this? What is it here? Trip line here? That's uh, two, two to nothing, to nothing, to nothing. Yeah. 
James is like standing there with the net. He's like just out to lunch. I thought it was not a keeper. You said it wasn't big anymore. Why are you looking though? I didn't say that. I said it might, Nobody might said not that. be. Oh, this one might need the net. All right. Nut. Wow, he, dude, John, he ate the bucktail. He was hooked perfect. The fish was never coming off. Awesome. What shall we get? Sea bass. Sea bass. Some, where's that bleed bucket? So that's going to conclude this episode of Next Drift. I hope uh, I hope you found some useful information out of this. Um, you know, it's uh, it's part of the part of the game that I like the most, to be honest with you. I mean, there's nothing like hooking a big fluke on the bottom and and uh, that feeling, but finding them to me is really where the craft is uh, is at. So, again, really appreciate you watching. And as always, if you like this content, please like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you real soon. Take care, everybody.